Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to an honestly very hard challenge. In the last episode, after chasing Evie's affections for pretty much the entirety of the bunny hunting mission, Chess has finally found himself back in his element again. He discovered these tiny secluded tide pools off by the Savannah ports, and he also found that they're hiding a pretty wide selection of fish in here too. And even those water-breathing plants. Now I wonder if this might help him unlock his true legacy. After all, his adopted father used to take care of the regular healing plants. So I wonder if he would take it upon himself to keep these safe as well? Because I'm hoping that they might give us the same sort of luck. All of Orion's babies were so healthy, and they had those peacock tails and everything. So maybe you can use these to your advantage. I suppose these would actually give us an advantage too. While the healing fruits aren't really useful for our tribe mates, this would allow us to breathe underwater. So if you had some seriously brave creatures who weren't worried about the leeches, they could gobble up these things and search for more fish in the sea. Fish and shells, even. While there aren't many creatures in our tribe who have the claw like you do, we do have plenty of nimble fingers around here. So you just have to find somebody who is just as brave as you and Evie. I don't think it's going to take very long for these two to grow closer, especially once he offers up his gift of fish. It's an old tradition that his family used to follow. They would offer up a big feast of fish to those who had stolen their heart. But interestingly enough, since she has the same fishing skill, she could actually dip her fishing tail in and grab a few of them too. So I guess they're going to be sharing this meal together. Let's have him jump over here, I guess so he can scare the fish back toward her. Oh, what a way to show off your fishing skills. At least you managed to scare a little bunny out from hiding, though. We'll have Jasmine go ahead and grab that one, too, for a little bit more food for our baby, and one less bunny for the bunny hunters to take down. Not that that's really a good thing in fine size. Now he has it in his head that he needs to best rascal, too, because it turns out that he's also pretty good at taking down bunnies. So I wonder if these two could maybe dart off into the grasses? Go toward the bunny wasteland that we wanted to explore before. I'm sure that rascal probably hears the bunnies in the darkness anyways, so we'll have him jump in first. Originally, his role was just to flush the bunnies out from the grasses for us. But now that he's gotten his own taste of bunny meat, I think he's found that hunting is a little bit more exciting. Let's have Vine try to jump in front of him. And I guess we could probably have Kaya follow them. It turns out, and one of you pointed this out to me, Kaya actually has the big ears in her traits. It's always so hard to see on the derp snouts because the ears look so similar. In fact, Yuri? No, he only has the normal ears. Yeah, look how similar these two look. They're just the slightest bit bigger, but we can see from her hearing trait that she has the big ears instead of the normal ones. So she would be a good one to bring into the darkness too. If we have her scoot over this way... Let's have her listen into the grasses. Oh, looks like you actually found the bunny itself. Well, you might as well swipe it up then. I know this isn't exactly your true reason why you joined this party, but you've got to keep up appearances. You'll have to make sure that you track down that bunny meat on the next turn too. Though I wonder if that would be a good way for her to lure some more Berginas out from hiding. If she poisons the bunnies. Oh my gosh and they pass away on the next turn. Oh my gosh, I think you seriously disturbed the bunny kingdom with that attack. Bunny wasteland indeed. It looks like you three are going to need a little bit of backup because there are a lot of bunnies in the darkness there and they are not too happy with you. I think for now, maybe we should just have you dig up this root over here. Oh my gosh, the bunnies are literally coming for you, Kaya. Yeah, we might want to see if we could bring some more creatures into the darkness too, though I suppose Vine probably thinks that he can handle every last one by himself. I suppose this would be a good way to even the score as well, so maybe he wouldn't want her calling back to Yuri. He does have his paws full anyways. Not only does he have plenty of berries to pick, but he also has one very mischievous little baby to keep track of. I'm sure Illumina herself probably wants to go diving into the grasses too. She's probably not really sure why she can't go with them. She only has one gem, so she wouldn't be safe out there. But aside from that, I feel like Yuri would probably want to keep most of his babies by the swamplands. 
As another creature with the nimble fingers, she would be an excellent acorn collector, and Yuri certainly knows a thing or two about acorns. In fact, so does Jade. And since it looks like Kipu has a second gem, he can finally do some acorn collecting too. Let's have Jade hop over to the side so she can pick up the ones over here, and that way Kipu can focus on the acorns in his reach. His very first acorn. And you know, since he's so good at hearing and smelling too, he would be even better stationed here than I figured. Kipu can be our first line of defense against the Baryinas, because goodness knows they're looking for a way to chip past our defenses as it is. So if he can sense them first, he could let Pixie know, so she can send them packing with her cold hard glare. For now, we'll just have her hop her way over here, so she can pick up this root. Oh no, Evie has a leech chest. It's not the end of the world, though. I think she's going to be okay on this turn, because it usually takes one more day before our creatures start taking damage. She will start bleeding on this turn, though. And unfortunately, Chess only has one more turn's worth of energy because he wasted it on chasing fish. I would have him try to scoop up the rest of these fish down here, but I think he would be far too worried for that. Far too worried to even swipe out a little bunny hopping by. So let's bring him right to her side, and he can try his best to inspect the wound and save her from any potential damage on the next turn. Leeches are very, very deadly in this challenge, but as long as our fishers are never alone, then I guess they won't have anything to worry about. So now we should be ready to go back to Kingsley's kingdom. Let's sniff around too to make sure that the rogue male hasn't come back. It seems like once again he has skittered off into the darkness, but I wouldn't be surprised if Kingsley finds him once he goes off at the ports. Now as for the poll, for which island we're going to go to next, it seems like most of you want us to go to the Oasis Island. So that means that Chess and Evie are probably going to be our alphas from here on out. They're going to be putting together the most adventurous of their tribe mates. But I think that Kingsley is still gazing out at these mountain ports and thinking that this would be the best place for his family to go to. He's probably hoping that Volt can conquer it as its king, because goodness knows he has enough energy for that. In fact, we might want to scoot him away from the water's edge, especially after seeing the leeches over here. I think he actually picked up a leech in the last episode, too, so goodness knows you've seen your fair share. We'll have you scoot all the way back here next to your mother, and right next to Zara, too. Zara and Dream are probably going to be helping Sybil take care of all of her babies, especially if she ends up having another. I was thinking maybe she could come on over here and breed with him again. I think I just heard one of the moles get scared away. Right next to Chess, of course. He is so worried that he didn't even notice it. But if we could perhaps have Sybil breed with Kingsley, then she could have just one more baby of his. Hopefully one that can keep her family just as safe as Bandersnatch. And was this termite mound one of the red ones? Yes, very, very unfriendly indeed. So while Sybil can take one turn to swipe it down, we're going to have to make sure that Kingsley can lick all of those... termites. <gasps> I did that. I actually did that. Oh, Sybil. Oh, Sybil, I am so sorry. I just sacrificed your mate. Well, it is a... Very, very good thing that we actually bred them first. I cannot believe that I just did that. We know about the spiky body too. Let me just make sure. Double check over here. Evie, no spiky body on you? Yeah, so Chess is going to be just fine. Oh, I should know better than that. Kingsley, it must have been your greed. Your greed for those delicious termites just got the best of you. You couldn't help but steal a little taste. Oh, Sybil. Heartbreak after heartbreak for you. I mean, the end of his lifespan was coming so soon, and I guess that truly does put the idea in Volt's mind that he is going to those mountain ports. It was his father's very last wish, after all. So the Banana Kingdom is going to be on the move very, very soon. And that brings me to Zara and Dreamer. These two have become such an inseparable pair, though I know that Zara is going to want to follow Volt no matter what. She still feels almost in debt to the king, because she knows she would have withered away if he hadn't taken her in as a baby. So after this tragic and sudden passing of his, she knows that she's going to have to do her best to keep Volt safe. And at the same time, she knows that she doesn't want to force Dreamer to stay in her shadow. 
She wants Dreamer to feel free to make her own choices and not feel chained to this relationship of theirs. And it is a pretty interesting relationship that they've developed. While they were both so suspicious of each other the first time they met, Zara didn't even want to let her out of her sight. They have grown so close in the meantime, taking after bunnies one by one. Honestly, they're the perfect bunny hunting team, maybe even more so than Fine and all of his friends. So, Dreamer, this would be a good opportunity for you to truly tell her how you feel. I think she would realize that after all they've been through, she could never really be without her. So even though she has a family to watch after, as per Miss Instructions, she knows that her place is truly right by Zara's side. I was really hoping that we could maybe grow their family a bit more. If they could find some babies to take care of too, I think that would be super sweet. But since we are going to be moving to the Oasis Island instead, it seems very likely that they're going to be staying behind. So we'll just enjoy every last moment that we can get out of them. We'll have Zara come on up here to clear out the grasses. And maybe Dreamer could even find a good place to bury their king. If they could sniff out a root around here. Or maybe, if they could sniff out a root by the mountain ports instead, that would probably be a little bit more fitting. Now as for Ben, I wonder if he's starting to feel a little prickle? A little push toward the other half of the tribe by Mist. If he's seen any dreams from her, she's probably told him that the tribe is planning on going to the Oasis pretty soon. Or at the very least, he knows that this is where he wants to bring Bandersnatch. I think that Bander would be a pretty good creature for us to bring with us as well. While he does have the derp snout, he also has that bear Yinaquan, and he has the nimble fingers too. So he would be a pretty versatile baby, and I'm hoping that he might be hiding the sticky tongue in his inactive traits. For now, as always, Ben is just going to have to stay by his side, so we'll bring him up here to pick some of the extra berries. Not going to take a single swipe at those bunnies though. Who knows if the defender bear is still watching. So after all of that drama, we should finally be ready to skip the day. Let's go straight back to Eevee, because this is going to be our top priority as soon as the day passes. Chess won't let a single moment go to waste. I do just very quickly want to make sure that nothing else spawned out here though. No dangers, no wanderers. Everything looks safe and sound. So go ahead and pull that leech straight off of her and lick those wounds of course. There you go, little Eevee. Why don't you go ahead and pick up the rest of the fish down here, just as a little reward to Chess. And if you had any doubt in your mind that he truly cared about you, I wouldn't be surprised after your revelation with Vine. Now you know for sure that his heart is in the right place. Let's have you go ahead and skitter back away from the shore a little bit. Well, there you go. You could actually pick up some of the berries over here. Though the fact that I hear some bunnies stealing berries already is mildly concerning. That might just be all the way back here in Bunny Wasteland. It's definitely not up here with Yuri, so he's going to be very happy. Go ahead and grab the extra berries on your berry bush too. We'll have you come on over here to show Lumina how to pick these berries on the next turn. Yeah, there's still one little berry hiding. Two berries, in fact. If only she had her next gem so she could scoop them all up with ease. I feel like she's going to bore of this very quickly, though. She wants adventure like Fine. Oh, and speaking of which, Fine, it looks like you can jump down here and grab this bunny for us at least. We'll have Rascal dive into the grasses too, lighting up the way toward the berry bush that we smelled deep inside. Yeah, it could just be that they were devouring every last one of the berries here, because goodness knows we saw enough of those bunnies. I don't see the one that you took down with your scorpion tail, though. I don't see the meat anywhere, at least. Yeah, you probably want to track that down. As long as we know where the bunny was, you could use that to your advantage. Or I suppose you could always hit another one with your scorpion tail instead. Two bunny snacks is better than one. And I guess your days of having babies over here is probably over, Jasmine. As you pick up that extra meat, we could have you come on over here. And grab another one, I guess. I hope this nest isn't going to wither away on this turn. I would like to gather it up for the extra nesting material. We're probably going to need it no matter which island we go to. Well, Asher, maybe you could scoot on over here. If you could help your mother with the bunny meat on the next turn, then maybe she can focus on the nest instead. 
it really seems like she could use an extra hand holding down the fort over here, especially since her sister has hopped over to the tree instead. Now, do you hear any danger out here, Kipu? Anything to alert your mother about? Just that bunny sitting high atop his burrow. I wonder if he's a bit overly cautious, though. Maybe he would actually send her in that direction, just to make sure that it's not anything bigger. Anything that they should actually be concerned with. And it's a ghost bunny, too, scootering away before she can even get to it. Granted, she is very, very slow, just like Kipu, too. So it wouldn't be very hard for the bunnies to outrun her. You know, I keep forgetting that we could actually have our creatures gather the algae down here, too. That also counts as some pretty good nesting material. So while it might be a little bit more difficult for us to successfully gather the grasses, the algae is good for a guaranteed nest. It almost makes me wonder if we should keep our eyes out for some water-related genes. It would actually be pretty super if we could breathe the gills of the water body into your line. For now, we'll just have you two pick up the grasses around here, and then we can go back to Kingsley's Kingdom. I guess it's not really Kingsley's Kingdom anymore, though. Now it's kind of Volt's Kingdom. Our speedy little prince has a lot on his shoulders. So, Sybil, we are not even going to touch the Sturmite Hill again. We know better now. Let's bring you into the grasses so you can light up the way. And I suppose Sara and Dreamer should probably take the front. We'll have them jump ahead so they can sniff around, just to see if there's any more danger out here. Nothing for us to be concerned with so far. Yeah, we're probably going to want to make sure that Sybil doesn't get too close to the ocean either. If she picks up a leech, then we already know what's going to happen. Either we sacrifice her, or we sacrifice somebody else. So you stay right there, Sybil. Go ahead and pick up the grasses around you. And Dreamer, if you're brave enough, I guess you could actually dip your toes into the ocean. First, let's see if we can move Ben a bit closer to his goal. We'll have him drift around the tree, pulling Bander right in his shadow. And then, Dreamer... You can take your very first step into the water. So far, so good. Seems like the tide pools might be quiet, so we should be able to move Sybil pretty safely over to the opposite shore. There's no way that we're going to let her get separate from our tribe. She's carrying Kingsley's very last baby, after all, which could be our last chance for a banana prince. Now let's go ahead and skip the day again. A little bit more peaceful than it was last time. Assuming that nothing... Dangerous spawns? Oh, hello, Defender Bear. That was you, right? There aren't any other bears out here? No peaceful bears to help us, I'm afraid? No, but that was definitely your growls. That wasn't hostile, was it? I mean, it's not like Ben has caused any trouble in his life. He's only tried to shoo away the bunny here and there because they were picking on his berries. Gosh, though, I don't know if we want to bring Bander right next to the Defender Bear. Would he take a swipe at this poor little defenseless baby? Surely not. That would go against your values, right? Let's bring Ben down here. We'll have Bander toddle in his shadow as always. You know, you two actually look pretty similar. He barely comes up to the Defender Bear's knees, but the color of their fur is the same. Gosh, I wonder if it was actually the Defender Bear's influence that changed Bandersnatch's color. Oh, interesting. Maybe he's going to be our little Defender after all. I figured that he was probably changed by the influence of the Swamplands, but I guess he has the heart of a Defender in him nonetheless. Well, let's just hope that nothing goes seriously wrong here. We'll have Ben go ahead and gather the last of his berries. And Bander should be growing his second gem on the next turn. So just in case Ben did get on the Defender Bear's wrong side, at least we know that Bander is going to be okay on his own. Now we'll get back to you in just a moment, Dreamer. I do want to make sure that we're keeping up on the berries, of course. I can hear those bunnies stealing them again. And it must be the ones right back here, right? right next to you, Kaya. I wonder if they're getting confused because of that beautiful white fur of yours. They must think that you're just another bunny, too. Now, fine, if you could convince Rascal to come on over here and pick up this bunny meat for you, you might be able to land another bunny for yourself. If Kaya doesn't pick off all of them first. Jump on into the grasses over here. Sniff around for us. Oh, are those all the bunnies that she caught? 
all the bunnies that she poisoned. Oh, how strange. They came over here to the flower ports and the coconut trees. I wonder if the bunnies were trying to escape to greener pastures or something. The flowers would probably be a pretty good snack for them, actually. Well, fine. If you hide over here, you might be able to surprise them as they come out of their burrows. Lumina must be just around the corner from her second gem, too. You have five days old, just like Asher, actually. If only these two were a little bit closer, they would probably make some pretty good friends. But as it is, I guess the distance is far too great. She might even see that peacock tail of his and be reminded of Vine, the adventurous little hunter who had chased his glory straight into the wastelands. But if we scooch on over here, we might be able to convince Yuri that you're actually taking some form of interest in these berries. Maybe he's excited that you're going to give it a try on the next turn, even though you just have your eyes peeled for adventure. Now where'd your little bunny go, Pixie? Do you hear it hopping around? No, and in fact, everything seems oddly quiet now. I suppose we could have you hop all the way back here, though, lighting up those snails as they slither through the branches. I suppose you probably figure that that's what Kipu was hearing. So she might be a little bit less likely to take his advice going forward. If all she's going to have to find are snails that she can't even reach, that's going to be it for her. She's not the type of creature to go on wild goose chases. Now with the terror of the leeches finally over, I suppose we could have you two come back down to the shores to pick up the rest of these fish. There we go, every last one of them is now safely stored away in our pocket. That means maybe we're going to have to seek out some more. And I suppose it would be a good opportunity for these two to work their way down the shore, and eventually straight to the ports as well. I wonder if Evie would be the one most curious. Let's bring her all the way up here. That's pretty far away from chess, of course, but we only have a few more turns to make. And of course, they are just as vulnerable to the leeches over here too. Zara, let's have you jump all the way back here. Right next to Dreamer? That way you can try your best to light up the way for Sybil, because we have to make sure that she's kept as far away from the waters as possible. And as for Volts, we probably don't want him going into the water either. He's so young that I'm afraid he might actually drown. So creep on out from the grasses, Sybil. We'll set you up right here. And then, Zara, we're going to have to see if there's a way to get you to the other side. There we go. As long as you have this place lit up, it should be pretty easy for Volt to jump over here now. And Dreamer as well. She should have a much more peaceful time swimming over to the beaches. Let's have Volt jump all the way to the other side on this turn. I don't think he would really have it in him to wait. And that just leaves Dreamer with one more turn to sniff around and see if she can find some roots to dig up. Oh, hello. Oh my gosh, is this the same rogue male that was over here in the Banana Kingdom? Oh my goodness, Jade. Send this guy packing for us, okay? With your one point in attack? Oh, you are so lucky that you have any at all. He really found himself far away from home. Last I knew, he was way over here. So he must have actually gone to the tide pools too. Gone all the way up the stream looking for a tree to call home. But this one is already taken, buddy. So Dreamer, let's just have you come on up here. And we'll see if you can dig up some of these roots in the next turn. Assuming that the rogue male doesn't cause you any trouble next. I'm not sure if this is where we're going to bury Kingsley though. I feel like we should choose a place that's a little bit closer to the ports, so we'll keep searching around on the next turn. But one last time, let's go ahead and skip the day here. We'll zoom out nice and far to make sure that nothing spawns in the darkness. And of course, to keep a very, very close eye on the Defender Bear too. Now I'm pretty sure I heard a growl. Is it over here, perhaps, in the bunny wasteland? Oh no, it's behind Chess? Oh, you poor thing, you just can't seem to catch a break. Oh, Chess, I suppose we could probably have you land a swipe. You would certainly have enough energy to run far, far away, so I don't think you would have to worry about the Bergina catching up to you. But this must be a message from Anime. Since these two are so likely to become our alphas, I guess she's making sure that they're actually leader material. So if they can conquer this challenge side by side, then she will be happy to call them her champions. So with one very quick swipe, 
will have him start making his way back down the shore, setting themselves up for their next big challenge. So in the next episode, we'll see if Chess is actually fit to call himself a ruler, right alongside his Queen Evie. And then I would imagine it's only a matter of time before we gather everybody up to the Oasis ports and set sail for the next chapter in our journey. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!